Hello! For this video, I will be talking about two Florentine artists from the early Renaissance which happened during 1400s to 1500s. The first one I'll be discussing is about a genius architect, engineer, sculptor, goldsmith, and inventor named Filippo Brunelleschi, one of the pioneers of early Renaissance architecture in Italy. He registered in the Silk Guild of Florence or Arte della Seta. Then, in 1401, as a designated master, he competed with Lorenzo Ghiberti and five other sculptors for the commission to make the bronze reliefs for the door of the Baptistry of Florence. Brunelleschi's trial panel depicting the sacrifice of Isaac is the high point of his career as a sculptor. Unfortunately for him, Ghiberti won the commission. This might be the reason why Brunelleschi gave up on sculpture and focused on architecture instead. I think he made the right decision. At the start of his architecture career, Brunelleschi rediscovered the principles of linear perspective which have been lost throughout many years since ancient times. Using this technique, three-dimensional objects or structures can be drawn more accurately and mathematically onto two-dimensional surfaces. At the time, to them, it was like an extension of the real world or a mirror of nature. Brunelleschi's discovery of linear perspective influenced the works of artists like Masaccio and Pietro Perugino, and even mathematician Leon Battista Alberti, who wrote a book titled De Pictura or On Painting, which served as a manual for future artists about the mathematical concepts underlying the rules of perspective. This led to the development of a branch of mathematics called projective geometry. Now, moving to Brunelleschi's most notable works. This is Santa Maria del Fiore, the Florence Cathedral Dome made and designed by Brunelleschi, commissioned by Cosimo de' Medici, leader of the most influential families in Florence at the time. It is considered an architectural marvel to this day, simply because it has never been done before. They didn't use any scaffolding when they built the dome because there wasn't enough food to harvest. There was also so much pressure in building this due to the political war going on along with the fact that it will be the first dome in Italy. A dome is very important to a sacred structure and therefore if a city has one, they will be deemed powerful, competent, and wealthy. Brunelleschi took inspiration from the dome of the Pantheon of ancient Rome the largest dome still standing today. Another work of his that has very obvious influence from the Greek and Roman architecture is the Hospital of the Innocents in Florence or the Foundling Hospital, which is an orphanage built in 1419. We can see the resemblance of the Corinthian columns lined in repetition, just like here, again on the Pantheon. There's also the triangles on the top of the windows that looks just like the top of ancient structures. The only difference is that Brunelleschi structures are particularly smaller and more human-sized and welcoming, while ancient structures were made extremely large because they were meant for the size of their gods. Now, one of Brunelleschi's last works was the Church of Santo Spirito in Florence, a cruciform church with a small dome in the middle. The church wasn't finished by the time he died. In fact, only one column was built by the time he passed away. Again, he incorporates the Greco-Roman columns for the interior, but things are closer to the ground, smaller, and more humanistic. What I think is most unique about this church are the protruding round chapels. Unfortunately, it was walled over and flattened after Brunelleschi died. Now it looks just like this, a bit modern looking and plain and flat. I wish they could have kept the original walls because Filippo Brunelleschi's works are about depth, about turning away from the norm and reviving the ancient Roman architecture and art forms. A lot of Renaissance works were also were Romanesque or like the Roman, like the ancient Romans. That brings us to another artist who is also named Filippo. We have Fra Filippo Lippi. 
He is a painter who was strongly influenced by Masaccio's frescoes that he saw at the Brancacci Chapel of the monastery. He spent a lot of his time observing those artworks because he was an orphan raised to become a friar along with his brother in the convent of Carmelite monks at Santa Maria del Carmine at 8 years old. He had quite a tragic life full of adversities. He even got abducted once and became a slave for 18 months until he was set free when he painted his owner. And then when he returned back to Florence, he was taken in by Cosimo de' Medici and was commissioned by the Medici family. And of course, he also painted a lot for the convents and churches. He was described as a very skillful painter, yet a very rebellious monk who snuck out a lot to get drunk and party with women. He loves painting women too. By this time in art in the early Renaissance, portraits have become a separate category in art and usually featured rich patrons or iconic and religious figures. Unlike before, portraits have only been a part of a bigger picture. This portrait of a man and a woman in a casement, made using tempera on wood, has been one of Lippi's most recognizable paintings. The side profile portrait painting has been sort of like a trend. See here different artists during the Renaissance that did the same thing, but Lippi was one of the first to revive this way of making a portrait, based on the old Roman coins with faces of nobles and royalties. In a way, it gives the person being portrayed a sense of class, honor, and wealth. This painting features extravagant clothing and jewelry to signify their status. You can also see here that in their traditional thinking, the woman is caged indoors being domestic while the man is outside looking into the window to see his future bride. She has the ideal body type of a woman back then and also the high hairline they used to pluck to be deemed as beautiful. It's like the beauty standards of their time. Of all these examples of the same side profile portraits, only Sandro Botticelli painted a commoner over here or a low status woman. Lippi was Botticelli's mentor. Lippi's works also inspired a lot of artists like Michelangelo and Da Vinci. Although we can see Masaccio's influence in Lippi's work, it is also obvious that he developed his own style throughout his career. We see a deeper contrast in values, which is a trademark in Lippi's works. I also love that his work seems like the subjects are popping out of the frame and the outlines of the human forms of the paintings that really separates one subject from another and from the background. The humans more like people they would normally see in Renaissance Italy and the children no longer look like constipated old men. There's also this sense of weight or gravity to the subjects and there's an atmospheric perspective making the painting look more natural and realistic. <laughs> 